it is, it is Irish. It literally means just not the white girls. <laughs> that makes sense. So, boycott. And what they would do is not buy British goods. And the thing was, okay, they want money from us, we won't buy their stuff, they can't collect their taxes. And here's the thing, how do you enforce a boycott? That's where the Sons of Liberty come in. At first, it was just simple intimidation. But as it went on for a while, it became more violent. So they would walk up and say, you know, are you sure you want to buy this? Or are you sure? Are you sure? You can talk to me. Are you sure? You do? Okay, well, come on. We'll talk to you about this. And then they'd beat the tar. Oh. Some <laughs> more? And that's how they would enforce it. Just pure, outright intimidation and violence. And then tax collectors, that's who they tar and feather. So tarring and feathering was a form of torture and humiliation. In fact, if they actually did the real tar and feathering, the boiling tar, that would be fake. But they would take like a tax collector, rip off their clothes so they'd be naked, shear their hair off, and I don't mean like a nice haircut, I mean like, you know, like cheap shears, and cut that off, and then basically take a bucket of red hot tar, which is meant to hurt, and think about trying to get that off. You pull off much of your arm, for example. So this would hurt, and they would throw it off, and then throw feathers so you look stupid. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing: Does anybody know? And then the best thing, the best thing. What a weird way to put it. Then they ride you out of town on a rail. No, a rail in 1765. Do you know what that was? There's my beautiful drawing of one. Have you ever heard of a split rail fence? And if you haven't, you've probably seen one. And so think about like two logs that stuck to make an act into the ground, and then a long pole between them, the fence. That's called a split rail fence. So that long pole, a rail. And you have that long pole. When they started using cars, they would pull along rails, pull back horses at first, and then train. They just call it that because it looked like the split rail fence. Hmm? Well, they're only about this high. Oh, on, oh, how would they put them on the rail? Yeah. Oh, so they would get this guy. Now, think about it. They, they have to beat him up. They torture him. And everyone's watching and throwing things at him. And then they would kind of drag him over and make him straddle the rail. And then they would get like seven or eight guys on the, either side of it. Now, let me be clear about it. This was meant to hurt. I'm not going to go into the physiology of this, but think about it. It's a man. Leave it there. And they would take this pole and then they would lift it up and kind of throw them up and down on. Oh, oh, God. And then ride them out of town where people are throwing manure and everything else at them. Oh, Any volunteers to be the next tax collector? Yeah. Well, if I became the next tax collector, you know what it would be? It would be, I don't see anything to tax. Nope, nothing to see here. Everything's good. Nope, nope, I'm just going home. And that's what happened. So it worked. Not everywhere, but especially around Boston. And that would lead to the comp to who got mad? Who, what, what people in Britain got mad at the boycott and said, we want that tax on. They're not buying British goods. Who's bad? Oh, it was the ladies. Well, the Whigs who were merchants. Merchants, the people selling the goods. And they said, you gotta get rid of this taxes, and it worked. 1770, get my years right, 1766, they got rid of the taxes. A great success. Now, Parliament should have realized, ooh, this was a mistake. Let's try a different town. You know what they did? They acted like little children. Oh, yeah. Well, we're coming back. That's pretty good, huh? And that's why when they that's why they passed that law that was on the quiz, the Declaratory Act. That's why that was passed. Ooh, this pen stinks. I gotta quit grabbing the green pen. And that said we can tax you when we, when we want to. Basically, what Parliament's saying, we're gonna tax you again. So it's a threat to the colonies. It's not just we're in charge, we're coming back. And so the thing is, you know, those who are upset and we're in the Stamp Act Congress, they're just waiting for it. 
And so in 1767, a new set of laws were passed. It was named after a member of the British Parliament, the, uh, the Prime Minister Lord Grenville, his key advisors who did like finance or um, they called you know colonial secretary, they called it a cabinet. And the United States took that, and that's why the president has a cabinet that came from the parliament. So what's the She's gone. Toss it on. Toss it on the kind of circus act. I'm gonna just perform on demand. My <laughs> <laughs> YouTube fan, my people. Actually, I now have, since I have enough videos and enough followers, I could monetize that. What do you mean? Get money for people watching it. That would be unethical. Well, because I'm a teacher. So? This is public. <laughs> so? <laughs> this is America. <laughs> but that would be unethical, so I don't. See, aren't you proud of me? <laughs> All right. So, now where am I at? 1767, the Townshend duties. Charles Townshend, well, the duties, and we'll say the Townshend Act. A duty, duties is another word for tax. You can tell how important taxes are when they have all these different names for it. How many know we have excise and tariff and all these things, value added, we have all these taxes, that's just duties. Townshend was the chancellor of the exchequer in the cabinet. We all know what that means. So, anyone? It's a medieval name that technically the finance minister in Britain still has, like our treasury secretary. They're so technically called the chancellor of the exchequer. X, E, X, and then checker, yeah. So it's a finance minister. But by the way, isn't Chance of the Exchequer, a great name. Isn't that a cool name? <sighs> you know, I miss those days. I remember that. All right, so with that, <laughs> so they would put this tax. They went to those excise taxes from remember the Trade and Navigation Acts, and they tried again, like the Sugar Act. They cut the tax on many different goods, many different commodities. So not just sugar, but they cut the tax on tobacco, on lead, on iron, glass, all these items. And then they thought, we'll enforce them. And so there's lots of ways they enforce them, but the one we have time to get to in class, because we there's always limitations, is they said, okay, if you're going to try your boycotts again, which, of course, that's what happened. If you're going to protest and rough up tax collectors, we'll protect them. We will send in troops. This is pre-police. There are no police forces yet. There was something called a constable, which was someone who was kind of like law enforcement. They also kept care of the horses, stable, constable. But no police. Police would not come to the 19th century. The first police force in the United States would not be to the 1820s in New York City. Does anybody know why? I'll tell you more about it later, but why not tell you now? to stop Christmas. So, with that, I'm not kidding. Really. I'll tell you more later. <laughs> excited? Cliffhanger, right? That's a G. That look like a G? Yeah. yeah. You're gonna go far on life, just agree. Agree to the person with a pen. I'll make it better. The quartering act. They're going to bring troops because they would enforce the taxes. They would protect the tax collectors. There were no English troops anymore in 13 colonies. Remember the militia, they protected themselves. And so by 16 or by 1769, there's pretty severe protests in, of course, Boston again. And so they sent a whole regiment. A regiment's supposed to have about a thousand troops. They every regiment was, they're always under strength. And so it's about 700 troops. And quartering me, where would the troops live? Yeah. Yeah, right in their homes. Now, there was a part of it to save money, but no, it was to intimidate the locals. I mean, it's really hard to plan any action, to protest, when there's somebody always listening. They're always there. This was meant to terrify the people of Boston. 
They live right in their homes. And what kind of homes do people live in? Okay, upper class people that have pretty nice homes and officers stay there, makes sense. Junior officers like lieutenants or non-commissioned officers, sergeants, they stay in probably middle class homes. Where do private stay? Hmm? Right, right with the poor. The poor who could afford homes, they have, what kind of homes do they live in? What's that? No, you probably are pretty close. Yeah, I like a hovel. Think about just one little one room. And what was the sleeping situation? No, that bed. Everybody on the same bed. Think about it. Husband, wife, kids, and a private. Why can't the private like take this? Take it. Well, and then part of it is so part of you have one bed is heat. So. so, where do you want your picture? Oh, the camera. Get get your get it. Take it of us handshaking. Huh? Get it of us handshaking. Shaking hands. Yeah. Do you earn? Have you earned a handshake? I have. There. See? Teamwork. Partnership. I wish it was like a guidebook. But when you read part of the newspaper articles, you know what you read, try to put in the context. Fit it in with something else you It's more. It's, it's more. And you know, if I think maybe else, that's how So I never have money, so I'm talking about it. Because if I have money, I do it. But I never have But you, I bet you have an IOU. So, what we'll do is I will pay with somebody else's IOU and what interest you want. Oh my God. How about 40% compounded continuous? <laughs> that is a good deal. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And then AM, this is how we absorb money. I get my 10%. And as a department, and then you can get back. What? No, I'll remember. No. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a tough one. Where do we put you? Now I'm there. Um, oh, no, we can't think of LBJ. But if we move the Declaration of the Constitution, we have a Declaration of the Constitution. What do you mean? You can hang with the veto. I can't believe it. You can start with the act. I'm going to take a look at it. I'm going to take a look at it. Okay, so here is the plan. Take out the worksheet for the video. For the people like you to take advantage. Do you feel guilty about it? I'm <laughs> 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 
I tried that actually once in once in high school. We asked him. And then the best part is I just okay with that. Okay, so take out the worksheet for this video. We're on question number four. I made that up. What question are we on? Five. We got to the heart to mind, and you're going to hear a heart to mind over and over again. But Danny DeVito is going to go up. You can't leave him there. I'm going to put prayer will be back there. So you happy with that? All right. So he's always looking at you. Much like David Cross. Yeah, so we got the All right. Okay, so I have good news for all of you. I want to show the video because we have short periods because we had an assembly for PEP. No quiz. So that means the quiz will be on Monday. Is that good? No. No. Wait, wait. I can't. Monday or today? Honestly, I need to Here we go. So let's go ahead and get to. No, I just I want to. I want to show as much as I can. All right. Come on now. But everyone gets so excited when I say the word quiz and Danny DeVito together in the same day. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of me. I've probably never done that in my life. <laughs> oh, but I also want to talk about one other thing that I got a a uh, a uh, very funny and uh, text from my brother, and I can't use the words because they're filled with colorful metaphors. Is this uh, no. Oh, that's quiz. Yeah, there's your quiz. Go. <laughs> Hope you're ready for. Uh, you should do well on it. No. So, big deal. Actually, a huge event happened today. I got it. I get a little New York Times. We get a little notifier. Big news. And literally, I think study hall was just ending. And I just happened to look just when it found out that Paul Manafort agreed to cooperate with the Mueller investigation. And probably. So he's been convicted, five of his seven felony convictions are probably now are gone. And I don't know what this is going to be. I don't know what cooperation means. This could mean a thousand different things, but that is like really big news. I mean, like, wow. News. And if you don't know who Moeller is or Manafort, it's time to know these things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's time to know. But for those of you who know, that was really big. So I texted my brother, who happened to actually be teaching the class at that moment at Ohio State, and he literally came out in the middle of the period and basically said, holy blank, blank, I can't believe this blank. Huh? He, no, he actually types blank. <laughs> 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 My brother has a very limited vocabulary. So he just. What does he do? Economics. So. <laughs> yeah, All right, here we go. So let's get back to this. But if you don't know, this is big. I don't know. He's kind of that's actually pretty fun. Here we go. Oh.